All right, good afternoon. My name is uh, Matt Clark. I'm the commander of the Major Crimes Division for the Denver Police Department. I appreciate you being here today and giving me an opportunity to provide an overview of the police officer-involved shooting that occurred on Wednesday, May 19th, 2021, at about 6.50 in the evening near Federal Boulevard and Vassar Avenue. And this is intended to be a preliminary briefing. It's based upon information that we've gathered after interviewing numerous witnesses, speaking with the involved officers, and analyzing evidence from the scene. This investigation is in the early stages, and there may be information that I do not have access to or cannot disclose at this point, which may limit my ability to answer some questions. Uh, with that being said, I'll describe this incident. Uh, on Wednesday, May 19th, 2021, at approximately 6.45 p.m., Denver police officers were dispatched to the area of South Federal Boulevard and West Harvard Avenue. That area is in Southwest Denver. They were dispatched on a report of a stabbing incident that was occurring there. While responding, the officers were advised uh, that a male was actually cutting his own throat with a razor knife. Based upon the nature of the incident, the Denver Fire Department and the Denver Health Paramedics were dispatched to the scene as well. Denver officers arrived at the location within five minutes of the initial call. As the uniform officers approached from the north on South Federal in their marked police vehicles, they observed the described individual on the east side of Federal Boulevard just south of Harvard Avenue. The officer saw that the subject was kneeling near a tree and recognized that he was bleeding from the throat. The officers drove southbound past the subject and positioned their vehicles south of the subject at Vassar Avenue. In doing so, they intentionally blocked the northbound lanes of South Federal Boulevard to prevent vehicles and pedestrians from coming into the area. Both officers exited their police vehicles with less lethal options readily available. Specifically, both officers were equipped with tasers and one officer was holding a less lethal pepper ball system. At the time, the officers were approximately 105 feet away from the subject. Upon recognizing the presence of the officers, the subject began walking in a direct path towards the officers at a steady pace while holding a utility knife in his right hand. <clears throat> the officers attempted to use time, distance, and cover to gain compliance from the subject so they could render aid for his self-inflicted injuries. He ignored repeated direction from the officers to stay back and walked into the northbound lanes of South Federal Boulevard. As the subject continued approaching the officers while holding the utility knife, one of the officers discharged a pepper ball, uh, less lethal system, 10 times. These 10 pepper balls struck the chest and abdomen of the subject. However, despite being struck by the pepper balls, the subject continued advancing at the officers. Recognizing the pepper balls were not effective in stopping the subject, the officer with the pepper ball system created additional distance, backing away from the subject as she transitioned to her handgun. The subject continued around the front of the police vehicles and was within 15 feet of the officers when an officer discharged a taser at the subject. Preliminarily, it appears that only one of the two taser probes made contact with the subject and as a result was not effective in stopping him. At nearly the same time as the taser deployment, the, original, excuse me, the other officer recognized the subject was not responding to verbal commands and was continuing to advance on the officers while holding the knife. Fearing the subject would assault her or her partner with the utility knife, she discharged her weapon five times, striking the subject. The subject fell to the ground and the nearby ambulance was notified to respond in. The subject was transported to Denver Health Medical Center where he was later pronounced deceased. To put into perspective how quickly this incident evolved, I'd like to uh, provide some time frames. So as described, the officers positioned, uh, were positioned just over 100 feet away from the subject when he began walking towards the officers. This occurs 18 seconds after the officers arrived and got out of their vehicles. The subject closed the distance and began coming around the front of the officer's vehicle with the knife approximately 11 seconds later. So he closed that 100 plus feet distance in 11 seconds. Gunshots were fired four seconds later. This is a total of 33 seconds from the arrival of officers to when shots were fired. And in that 33 seconds, officers issued clear and direct commands. They backed away from the suspect to create additional distance. <clears throat> they utilized both a less lethal pepper ball system and a taser before discharging a handgun. At the scene, investigators recovered a red Milwaukee utility knife, and this is the same knife the subject had in his hands uh, as he approached the officers and also the same knife that he used to stab and cut his throat prior to the arrival of officers. The officers who responded to this incident were equipped with body-worn cameras and their cameras were activated and captured their interaction with the subject. 
The subject in this case has been identified as 52-year-old Raul Rosas Zarsosa, R-A-U-L R-O-S-A-S hyphen Z-A-R-S-O-S-A. His date of birth is 9-20 of 1968. The officers who responded to this incident were wearing Denver police uniforms and driving marked Denver police vehicles. The officer who discharged her weapon is assigned as a patrol officer in District 4. She's been with the Denver Police Department for two years and has prior law enforcement experience. This officer has not been involved in a prior police shooting incident in Denver. Uh, that involved officer is currently on a modified duty assignment. As in any other critical incident investigation, a multi-agency investigative team is utilized to investigate these incidents, and that was done in this case as well. That in, this investigation is being monitored by the Office of the Independent Monitor, which is a civilian oversight entity. At this time, we are not looking for anyone else connected to this incident. However, if anyone uh, witnessed this incident or has video of this incident, we'd ask that you contact the Denver Police Department or Crime Stoppers. I can answer any questions you may have. Thank you.